Hello you amazing hackers. So I got a question in the comments lately. Uh, somebody asked me in a Google Dorks video that I made if Google Dorks are the only thing I do for recon. Now of course not, that's only a small part of what I do, but I wanted to show you guys today what I actually do for recon because I have a lot of things I do uh, for recon. So. Um, Let's dive straight into it, shall we? First of all, I'm going to put the comment on screen. If you guys want to uh, be featured in an upcoming video, please leave a comment below uh, and maybe you'll get picked out for the next video. Um, I really like answering your guys' questions, um, so please keep sending them in. Now, the first thing I want to show you is Maltego. Maltego is a pretty expensive product, if you ask me, but it will really help your recon. Um, what it will do is it will help you map so there are different versions you can get a free version I really like the classic version because uh, you can get a lot more results you can get uh, you can get all the transformations you can get email support that's kind of stuff um, but the free version is pretty good as well it features a lot of the features that you need so you can get for example up to 10,000 entities per graph Maybe I should show you guys an example as well of what Maltego can do. So it'll pretty much just map your... Um, let me close this message real quick. There we go. So what Maltego will do is it'll map out your attack surface. So that way you'll have an idea of what your whole attack surface looks like. It'll do some OSINT for you. Um, there are many different things you can do with Maltego. You can have a look in the features. The free version is available. Um, if you can, I would upgrade to the paid version, but only for companies. Of course, when you're just a bug bounty hunter, the free version is good enough. So the next thing I want to show you guys is this. Of course, you guys all know my Google Dorks video. This is a cheat sheet that I use for Google Dorks. So um, this is one of the things that I use a lot. Um, another thing, of course, is GitHub Dorks. So I have found a repository, this guy TechGone, he made a really good Python script called GitHub Dorks and it'll look through a GitHub repository, so you just use it Python GitHub Dork Py minus R and then you go for, minus R for single repository, minus U for user, um, you can use minus U for an organization, so as you can see it will go through one specific uh, repository or will go through all of the users repositories or an organization. You can authenticate with it, you can use uh, an authentication token, many different options here. There are some limitations of course. When you're doing unauthenticated requests it will be slower because it's rate limited. Um, and for me at least it doesn't always work when you have a giant repository at all time out after a while. So you have to be careful with what you're doing. Now very useful these are the specific dorks that it checks for so you don't always have to do them manually you could just of course um, do these manually some of these if you know what you're looking for specifically now uh, next thing I want to show you guys is LinkedIn now you guys may be thinking how can I use link LinkedIn to hack well LinkedIn is a great place to look up the company to follow the company to know when you release new features the companies will usually post all of their business related stuff to LinkedIn so this is a great place to stay up to date also you can see with which employees are in the company and you can try searching for their github accounts um, there are many different things that you can do with LinkedIn now the next thing I want to show you guys is the harvester what the harvester it will do is uh, it will just do OSINT for you, it will get you subdomains, uh, emails, uh, IP addresses, URLs and it will do that using... now one thing I want to tell you guys is that your OSINT tool, I'm going to be showing you a lot of different OSINT tools and the biggest difference between these OSINT tools will be their sources so as you can see the passive source list of this are, uh, the source list of uh, the harvester is pretty big so um, this is why I like the harvester. Um, I showed you guys. Uh, some, I'm going to show you guys some other uh, tools like Recon NG. Those are going to be taking different sources, and that's why I use both of these tools together. So I use the harvester for OSINT, 
so email, subdomain, names, IPs, URLs, you name it. That's all the harvester. And then we also have Recon NG. Um, this is a framework for OSINT and it will give you a few different tools for OSINT to do some OSINT uh, in. Now I will make a separate video on Recon NG because it's a whole different story. Uh, I can make probably a 30 minute video just on Recon NG. Um, but it's very useful and I would really recommend you guys look into it. Now the next thing I want to go show you guys is Spiderfoot. Um, it'll do thread intelligence, um, it'll do recon, it'll do performance parameter monitoring. Now those are all fancy words, what does it all mean? It's a little bit like um, one of the first tools I showed you, Maltego. It's a little bit like this, so it'll graph your It'll map your attack surface, it'll help you a bit with that. That's Spiderfoot. It's also default in Kali Linux, I believe. Now, the next thing I want to show you guys is GeoCreepy. What GeoCreepy is, is it's a geolocation OSINT tool. So it'll help you get information through social networks, through um, geolocation tags and photographs, that kind of stuff. Um, it's pretty useful, it'll help you for example map out your targets, um, you can do a lot of creepy stuff with this. <laughs> so um, if you are into some geolocation stuff, creepy is probably the tool for you. Now uh, the Wayback Machine is a tool you probably all recognize as well because it was in my last video about um, Wayback Machine specifically. Um, there are a lot of different things you can do with Wayback Machine. I'm going to quickly summarize them for you so you can get a complete sitemap throughout history, throughout the years. You can get um, a summary of the site which will contain hidden URLs which you probably possibly have been removed but possibly are still active as well, just not reachable from the main site. Um, you can go back into history and for example check out deleted tweets um, you can do all kind of stuff with Wayback Machine. So uh, if you want more information on that, please check out my previous video. I'll link it in the description as well. I'll also link the specific Google Dorks video that I was talking about previously. Now one of the last things I want to show you guys is DNS Recon. So this will do a DNS uh, Recon, which means it will uh, go and look at the DNS records for your domain and uh, give you everything that it finds. So MX, A, AAA, SPF, DXT records, all of the DNS records that it can find, it'll spit out. This can be useful, um, not always because it's just DNS, so uh, some other tools that I showed you do this as well, but this one does it a little bit more thorough. As you can see, you can search the top 1 million subdomains on Alexa. Um, pretty useful at times, but uh, only if you just run these tools in the background while you're doing your hacking and while you're doing your thing. So um, the last tool I want to show you is DNS Dumpster. Now this is also a pretty useful tool. It'll probably take a while to load, but DNS Dumpster has a few useful features that I really like. Um, the first I really like is that it has a GeoIP uh, geolocation map of all of the IPs. So as you can see, nine hosts were found in the United States. Uh, it shows you all of the DNS servers that it did found. So you can use this again for your uh, next steps. And it shows you a topology map. So really useful. You can also view the graph. Much bigger, but this feature is still in beta. So it's it's sort of like one of the other tools to us. You can export this map as well, by the way, which is pretty useful. It's a little bit like Maltego, only Maltego is specialized to do that. DNS Dumpster um, is only just recently added this feature. Uh, the one other thing I wanted to show you guys about this tool specifically, here we go, is that you can just download an XLSX file of all of the hosts. Um, and also there is a cap on how many A records it can get. So you can get a full report with the domain profiler, which is of course paid, I believe. Um, as you can see, there is a pricing page, so this one is paid. Now, 
Those are pretty much the tools I use in my everyday recon. I just want to map out my attack surface as much as possible so I get to I want to see everything that I can about my attack surface. And then I just the next thing I do is I do a mass scan on all of my targets. I do an nmap scan on the specific ports. Um, if there are web servers on there, I'll run a Nikto scan. Um, I'll also run uh, an eyewitness scan just to get screenshots and then I'll start identifying my targets manually throughout the screenshots. But these tools all help me with uh, my day-to-day -day work and mapping my uh, attack surface, taking notes, that kind of stuff. So I would like to thank you guys all for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention as well, I have a Patreon now. Uh, I really don't want you guys to feel obligated to uh, donate anything, but some people have asked me if I have a way for donations. Now I do, it's uh, in the description below. If you guys would like to, it's always welcome, but it's not needed. I really uh, appreciate everything you guys do for me. You guys watch my videos, you guys like them, you guys subscribe. That's more than I could ever ask for. But if you feel like you want to give some extra, which I cannot thank you enough for, there's a Patreon link in the description. Thank you guys very much, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.